What's up, guys? We are live. Starting a tad bit late, as always, we got Vadim from Honest Signals joining us. So, if you guys haven't seen, we did a part one of this interview. I want to say, what was it, like six months ago? No, more. It was like a year ago, I think, last November. Mm, okay, okay. About a year ago. Time maybe, flies. Or maybe January. I don't know. Yeah, we did, we did part one a year ago. So, we're not going to get into some of the same topics we talked about. So, if you guys want to hear how Vadim learned game, his whole story, blah, 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 then check out the first one. It was really good. It was a good interview. So in this one, we're going to focus on more of the deeper topics. We're going to try to reverse engineer Vadim's game, his charisma, his verbals, and all that good stuff. So a little announcement. A lot of you guys have been asking what's going on with the Tate interview. Out of my hands. You know, he flew back to uh, home. Uh, so if you guys want the interview to happen, you guys have to bug him about it because I it's out of my hands at this point. I've gone out of my way to make it happen. Not much more I can do. So, yeah, just hit him up if you got one to happen. Or if not, you know, it is what it is. We got plenty of other people who want to be on the podcast. So, uh, who, who are you interviewing? We're, I was supposed to interview Christian Tate. Christian Tate. Oh, no, no. Tristan, Tristan Tate. Tristan Tate. What is he? What does he, he do? You know the Tate brothers? The guys in Romania who run the uh, the webcam girls? No. Oh, okay. Some porn dudes? Uh, they're cool. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're legit, but they're really hard to get a hold of. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been trying for a year. Right. Dude, it's, we're, it's expand, annoying. we're expanding Dude, the, the, the podcast team. It's, it's annoying like it. when I have to game dudes harder than I have to game girls. Like when I'm like going harder on on dudes, and I'm going on like 18-year-old big titty blondes. I'm like, something is off in this right. picture. For the, for the business. You have to. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's. Thanks for ha- yeah, thanks for having me on, bro. Yeah, dude, it's good. First, to- first chat was uh, was fun. Yeah, yeah. What was that noise? Yeah, just ice maker. Just ignore that. Um, yeah, and no, obviously it's uh, even more interesting in uh, in in person here. It's a cool little setup you got. Yeah, we get to stare each other in the eyes as we talk. Are we we already live, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, live. Guess, we're, yeah, live. we're live. We're live the whole time. Guys, I uh, took uh, two hits of uh, Alex's vape, so you know I may be a little off the ball, but I'll, I'll stay relatively on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's start with this. I mean, a little warm up question: How do you compare? You're from what Toronto, right? Toronto, yeah. How do you compare Miami to Toronto? For for what for just game like, and, all approach meeting girls? Yeah, game and what else? Oh, that's game. it. Um. I mean, they're pretty similar, to be honest, uh, for the most part. Most, I always say this, most most cities are actually quite similar. And especially if you're talking about, like, most North American cities, right? Like Chicago, oh. Toronto, L.A., New York, Miami. Um, I mean, sure, you got some more Latin women here. You know, maybe L.A., you'll see some more Mexicans. Uh, but there's no difference, really. And then Miami, I guess, has, like, kind of like L.A., has more exclusive like highly exclusive venues which toronto doesn't really have so for those you also need to like do you know bounce a relationship game and all that just to get in um which is a process which you know if you're not in the city for long i guess you can't really do or it's hard to do or you you know you 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 can grease the bouncer sometimes uh and then it's like but once you get in and if, if you have if you have like a good command of game and social dynamics it's actually almost advantageous because people are in booths but at the same time they feel like okay you must you must be somebody cool to be in there kind of thing you know you must know someone or you're you're or you're paying money or whatever like i've been to places in la um like that and it's almost like the girls are like friendlier just because you're like in there and they're all fucking stunners Mm. that's one thing in toronto you don't have is like Night game's good, but you don't have places where, like, if you if you get in, you're guaranteed just, like, stunners on end in that one venue. What's your preference between uh, day game, night game, and for night – if we're going to pick night game, do you prefer, like, chill bars or do you like clubs or what's your what's your ideal situation? I have to admit I prefer night game. Yeah. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> I, think, I think it's more uh, efficient. I mean, I think there are a lot of guys who – don't like night game as much i think mostly because they don't enjoy it as much slash are afraid of it it is it could be a very overwhelming environment um night game can be good if you're in a good venue which i feel with the pandemic things kind of got fucked up a little oh. yeah you in know, miami no one gives little, a little, little, little <laughs> ratchet ratchet at times in, in i saw this everywhere toronto uh miami what else uh chicago it's almost like yeah, it's not ideal. But um, 
What was I going to say? If you are in a good venue, especially I like loungier venues, to, to go back to your question, loungier patios, but with or like a blend where you have like, you know, a place with louder music, those kind of vibes. And then you can go out and there's like a cool patio with like lighter music and you can have that contrast with girls that creates that creates like a powerful experience. Yeah, my, my it's just fun. Yeah. My my ideal setup is a night venue that is big, ideally outdoors, and the music isn't too loud and it's packed with chicks. Like where you can talk. I hate places that are loud. Yeah, super loud can be annoying, but sometimes strangely I'm just in the mood for it. If I'm like what do you do? You if I'm, if I'm just like Yeah, I love dancing. If I'm just like sometimes if I'm high on weed, it's just like boom, I'm just kind of like into it. It's weird. Yeah, I think that's the one big uh, difference between you and I is that I can't I can't game on weed. I can't do podcasts on weed. Like I can <laughs> hey, I can I'm eat, trying. No guarantees, I can, guys. I can, I can eat on weed and I can fuck on weed and I can sleep on weed. Those are the big three things. I can play with my dog on weed, number four. And that's about the extent of it. I can't I cannot game on weed at all. Yeah, some people yeah, they get weird when they go out uh, when they go out on weed. They get way too introspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get kind of antisocial and shit. So. Yeah. I don't know. I like it. I, I guess like it hits it. everybody differently. Yeah. All right. So let's let's, let's get into this. So uh, let's try to reverse engineer your general game structure. And I'll, I'll kind of give you an example of what I mean. So I would say that for texting, for online, my structure is open, uh, build some investment, um, close, first pl- plan A is to try to get her over my place. If she objects to that, get her at a bar near my place. Uh, and then um, just confirm and deal with the concerns and objections that they come up. My structure on dates, like let's say I go on a public date with a chick, I would say is I just joke around a lot. I crack a lot of jokes. I don't take shit seriously. And I try to build as much sexual tension as possible. So I combine humor with sexual tension. So I'll just like do slow down my speech a little bit, do a lot of strong, intense eye contact. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I caught that one. Yeah. I saw, a little bo- I, saw, I saw a little boner pop up. You guys got to check out the Zoom cam for that, you know, little light touches and stuff like that. And then I will try to pull her back to my place. Uh, usually, usually what I do, actually, I got this from uh, old school RSD is I don't even tell her we're going back to my place. I just say, Oh, let's get out of here. I know this other awesome place. And this awesome place just happens to be my house. It actually works pretty well. Uh, sometimes girls even give me credit for it. Like, Oh, that was smooth, Alex. That was smooth. So this is the fir- first date? Yeah. The first date. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so that's generally my game structure. Once we get inside, typically I'll pull her a drink, t- take her on the balcony, 10, 15, 20 minutes of talking, start escalating and move things to the bedroom. The so, balcony. All right. That's some nice views you got there, bro. Yeah. But I didn't always used to have a balcony. I used to live in a shitty place in Koreatown where, you know, was, so, you know, it's, it's not just the balcony. It's been, it's been a journey, guys. It's, it has been a this journey. This doesn't all happen overnight. No, definitely not. Koreatown in LA? Yeah. Okay. You ever go to Break Room 86? Quick, quick uh, tangent. No, what is that? It's like an 80s themed bar. It's super cool in Koreatown. There's like a hidden entrance in a hotel. Like you open up a, uh, what do you call it? It's like a vending machine from the 80s and you just, boom. You're no, trans- there's, a place you're like transported. That in, there's a place like that in Hollywood that I used to go to. Like a 70s bar. Same, same guys that own it. Yeah, I think so. Same owners, sorry. Yeah, Davy Wayne's, you're thinking. Davy Wayne's, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a fucking pickup spot and a half. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that's yeah, that's kind sorry. of my general game structure. So what would be yours? So, sorry, and just to cap off, so you you bring them back, um, show them views, start jerking off, so, 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 so <laughs> and all that. No, I mean, yeah, like I mean, I'm just I'm just giving example of what my general game structure yeah. looks like. So I'm just curious, what is yours, and like what what would you say is similar, what is different? You know, I want to kind of compare and contrast. <sighs> um, well, as far as like just like overall macro process, yeah. Um, before getting into like my views on developing the actual chemistry with girls, it's kind of a separate topic, but there's overlap, surely. Um, I don't know. You well, you you meet her night or day. You follow up, and I'll use audio sometimes, video messages to follow up with girls. Video messages only if like the lead is not super strong you know not a lot of rapport built at night she was drunk kind of thing because you want to convey as much vibe in your um you want to convey as much vibe over text as possible to for it to convert as much of your um yeah to convert basically right so if you had like three minutes with her like five minutes with her in the moment you know it was a cool emotional experience for her but that's all you are a fleeting emotional experience. So the next day she's like, Oh yeah, 
I think at like around 1.40 a.m., I talked to this pretty cool guy from Toronto, you know, but then my friends whisked me away. I, I mean, she might not even remember. It's maybe in the subconscious somewhere. So like you have to, um, you have to show her you're relevant again, right? So sometimes hit them with a video, if not an audio quickly, they hear your voice, they hear your vibe, very key, uh, you know, gifts here and there. Otherwise, yeah, I just, uh, I, I follow up, I text them over the next couple of days and within like a few texts, I'm trying to, <clears throat> I'm trying to set something up essentially. Um, that I'll ask for their schedule. Then let, let me just yeah. really quickly uh, deep dive into this. So you mentioned, uh, so help me understand this. You mentioned that you want to make her, make yourself seem relevant because uh, she might forget who you are, but you also said you're going for the meetup pretty quickly. So how do those two like reconcile? You mean like with a video you try to, is that you just send one message that's like an audio video message to remind her who you are and then you're going for the meetup quickly? Or? Yeah, because as soon as she can experience your vibe, your vibe and like, you know, I'll share some little like funny, mildly amusing thing. You know, it's like a 15 second video message or audio message, right? Mm, okay. I'll combine that with some text. But like as soon as she can experience that vibe, like that's the most important part. Okay, this guy's pretty cool. He's normal. This is worth like, you know, exploring a little further and then you know you build something you might have to i guess with like the leads that where there was no uh rapport i might exchange more audio messages to strengthen it to be fair to be fair before i go for the meetup yeah and you know it's kind of a gray area sometimes i'll just make random calls okay but otherwise if there was good rapport just a few messages let's try to set up a meetup okay you get the meetup on the date what, uh, what happens next the date, um, if I want to keep it simple, I'll go to a couple of bars. I'll usually find an area with a few bars, and I'll have at least one to start, maybe a couple in mind. And I like to hop. Uh, and I think it's actually very strategic, but also more enjoyable for me. I always make it first, what do I want to do? What's most enjoyable? And then uh, what's strategic secondary? But obviously, the, yeah, you have to reconcile the two. Um, Although sometimes, like, if you feel like doing something ridiculous, why the fuck not? <laughs> like, I took this girl on a fucking uh, random, like, day trip to some, like, uh, Halloween-themed, like, fucking pumpkin farm shit. Mm. Well, I mean, it's kind of an adventure, actually. It's not even that. Did but anyway. Get, did you get to play with her pumpkins? I did. I did. They were they were not as big as I would have liked, but... Um, Okay, we digress. So, look, you find a bar, uh, you find a couple of bars, sorry. The bar hopping is key uh, because you can experience various venues, okay? And I like that. So, one drink in one venue, second drink. Mm. Uh, second venue, maybe I'll do three mm. venues tops. And then... That's like an old school RSD concept, right? Is it? I believe so. I could be wrong, but... I don't know. I think uh, I, I used to do that back in the day. Yeah, I just, I just find it more interesting. Yeah. I like uh, if I want to get more creative, then I'll then I will look up what I call events, event dates. So some little art gallery opening thing, like if, especially if I really like the girl. And sometimes I'll save this for like a second date, but I'll do it on the first. An event date is cool because you can walk around. Let's say a little gallery party, right? Some some photographers, some obscure photographers doing a gallery party, right? It's like oh. come out, five dollar cover. You know, they have alcohol. Super cool. You engage with the art. You walk around. There's a DJ. You vibe. You make comments here and there. You give her space. I always talk about this, creating comfort through space, time and space. Um, as time passes, obviously, comfort builds. But space as well. You know, you walk around. You're kind of doing your own thing. She's doing her own thing. And then you come together. And she just it creates nice contrast. And then at some moment, you can have, like, a longer conversation with her. Um, so... Let, let me phrase yeah. the question like this. Uh, okay, yeah. let's say you have a client and he's like, hey, man, I have a date tonight. We're meeting at this bar near my place. I have absolutely no idea what the fuck to do on a date. So what would you tell that guy? Well, oh, oh, we gotta get the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, before I answer that, let me just uh, to, to finalize. And then mm -hmm. I won't try to take them home these days it's, it's been some time i i will <laughs> let me phrase it like this plot twist yeah i try to push off in them home 
until the second date, generally really? speaking, unless it's super in my mind, like organic and it just feels right kind of thing. I used to do the first date pulls. I find overall it's it's not it's not as good, especially for girls of quality, girls that are relationship material. Of course, there's going to be exceptions, like I said, if it happens organically. But otherwise, I'll wait until the second date. <clears throat> Interesting. And at that point, it's 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 like, hey, come over. I'm going to make some Russian pancakes for you or some food for you. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can fucking, I don't know, watch a movie or just have drinks at your house. And then you can try to, you know, get her get her to bed. I want some Russian pancakes. Uh, no, so, okay. Sir, so, Sirniki, you have those, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, man. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, me and Vadim are both Russian. Yeah. We thought about doing this podcast in Russian to fuck with everybody, but <laughs> figured it wouldn't be too YouTube friendly. Okay, so that's that's interesting. Let's actually I wanna before we get into what not to do what what, what you would tell a guy to do who has no idea on a date. Yeah, yeah. I wanna yeah. unpack this. Yeah. So what made you uh so okay, so first of all, let me understand. So first off, the first date you're meeting her at a public venue, blah blah blah. Second date is straight to the house, you're offering to cook for her or something like that, or watch a movie. Yeah, generally straight to the house, but not always. Sometimes it might be like an event date. You know? Okay. But then you're, you're, but you're, and then, to... and then I try to take her home at the end of the night. So, what made you, uh, you know, who else does this? Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, that dude in Dubai, uh, Black Dragon. Uh, that's the, he, I had him off our podcast. He was explaining this. Sounds, as... sounds, uh, sounds serious. He's a pretty cool guy. But so, okay. So, what made you switch from, uh, do, trying to pull him on the first night to doing the second date, two dates thing? Okay. Um, I think the first night is, Overall, I'm speaking in general terms. Mm -hmm. I think it's too aggressive. I think it's too uh, can come off as too needy. I think it can give send girls the wrong idea about you. That you're mm -hmm. a player. Um, I think it could just sabotage a lot of things, and I've and I've definitely done that with quality girls. You know, especially if you're like once they're there and they're kind of like on the fence, and you're kind of like trying to push for it and all this like Alamar shit. You know, they used to talk about, which is, for the most part, no bueno. Not, not a good idea, dealing with LMR and all that. Um, because, like, it's, it takes a very fine calibration. And overall, it's just unnecessary. You can just wait for the second date. And it just can, you know, I don't remember who said this, but you can hit this point of no return where the, girl's, yeah. mm -hmm. where the girl has this just impression of you as, like, player, needy. There's, there's strong expectations. Um too aggressive, leaves a bad taste in their mouth, and you can lose them. And it's just not even enjoyable for me anymore. It's stressful. I'm like, is she gonna, is she gonna put out? Is she not? It's like, just wait till the second date. And so it always happens like this on the second date. That's like, interesting. Do you, uh, do you at least make out on the first date? Yeah, I'll try. To, I'll try to go for the makeout. Yeah, almost, okay. almost every time. That always feels right for the most part. And like I said, in some cases, it just feels very on and quote unquote organic. Um, I'll pull. But I won't like push for it hard or anything like mm. dealing with LMR. That shouldn't know. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is fair. Uh, my, my one counterpoint to that, and this has been maybe this is just my experience. This is kind of what I've noticed, at least in Miami, is that the majority of the time, like chicks in Miami have so many fucking options and they're so bombarded with offers. But the ultimate form of investment is sex. So if I can bang the chick on the first night, there's a quite a good chance that she'll come back for night two, night three, night four. But if I don't get that investment, like if we just have, I've had so many situations where I was like more laid back and we had a nice day and she was like, oh, I can't wait to see you again. It was so much fun, blah, blah, blah. She almost like didn't want to leave. And then silence. <laughs> <laughs> like time and time again. So like this is this is why like my just my like my I don't believe that has to do with not having sex. I don't believe that. What's what's your take on that? Um if a girl's into you, she's into you, period. Um she might get more hooked after sex. Uh yes, but I don't believe they're gonna drop off because they don't have sex with you on the first date. There's no way. It might be to do with other factors, whether on her end, on your end, she's seeing some guy, who knows? All, all the factors that are usually at play. Um but she wouldn't be like the D. I'm, I'm no, no, no. Sorry. So I think you misunderstood me. So I don't, I don't mean that she's dropping off because you didn't have sex with her. I'm saying that because you don't have, like, okay, let's take it from a chick's perspective. She has like every night, any attractive girl in Miami has like 20 different offers. Like, do this, do this, do this, do this. She goes out with a guy. She has fun with him. He's a good guy. She likes him. Right. And she has, she has good intentions. She, at the moment when she says, I can't wait to see you again, she means that she's not bullshitting. Sure. Right. 
But then, you know, a few days rolls around and she's just getting bombarded with offers. And she's like, oh, I got invited to this boat party. Let me, let me, I'll get back to him another night. And then just this, this pattern keeps going. Versus on the flip side, if she fucked you, she's so invested at that point. So that she's like, oh, but will this guy, I, I know I can get good dick or like, oh, I've already fucked him. So, because every girl's worried about, most girls are worried about increasing their body count. So she could go on a date with another guy who has a better offer, i.e. a boat party or something. Sorry, most girls are, are worried about increasing what? So I, I think from most of the girls I've interviewed, they said that they want to keep their, generally speaking, they try to keep their body count low on the lower end. So they're, like, for example. Like like count? Hmm? Like count? Late, late, late yeah, 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 yeah. The late girl count. want to keep it lower, yeah. I guess. Yeah, most, most of the time, for what I've seen, except some exceptions, some chicks don't give a shit. But most chicks, I think, want to keep their body count on the lower side. So I think that when you bang the chick, it's just like she's she, like a few days later, she's horny, and maybe another guy invited her to a boat party, but she's like, well, if I go out with that guy and we have a really good time, it involves me increasing my body count versus this guy already fucked. I already know that he's safe. I already know that, you know, he doesn't have a small dick. I already know he doesn't have herpes, blah, blah, blah. So it gives her extra incentive to meet up. I don't know. That's just been my experience. Um, I think that I actually don't don't think most girls are hanging out with enough cool guys. Um, and it, and the girl, the kind of girl you're talking about are probably like, the, you know, you know, IG whores, you know, like looking for daddy, looking for more validations. The ones that are getting hit up, all these boat parties, all that shit. And I mean, those kind of girls, like maybe you won't even have as good of a connection to begin with. And maybe she, because she's that type of girl, she's going to be more distracted in these, like in these various offers because they offer her more value, cloud, whatever. I mean, it's, so it's well. So with those ones, like I don't even even care about those kind of girls. But for the most part, if we're generalizing, um if she likes your vibe like your priority i think i think a big difference is that most of the girls you meet is from day game and night game most of the girls i meet is from online so i think that plays a key role so i think that chances are a lot of the chicks you're running into don't have dating profiles like for example with me and my ex we did this experiment right we took she's a pretty girl but she's not like a perfect 10 she's like a 7.5 whatever we created a tinder profile two pictures don't even show her body which is her best feature mm -hmm. and uh she got something like 500 likes in 24 hours and guys were like invited oh dj cal is coming i got i can get you in like she was just like bombarded with offers for shit that like you know i i don't have connections with dj cal i'd be like i don't know but i don't but uh, okay and so you're saying so let's, let's, look, let's look, look at all these distractions right 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 and, and right and my view on that is for for the average girl okay for most girls i would say all that is just kind of noise and distractions. But so on the one hand, yeah, she's getting these offers, blah, blah, blah. But she's not emotionally connected to them. They're just like ideas. Whereas she thinks that she thinks to you, let's say, and she had a good date with you. That's real. Real will always supersede some kind of like abstract idea of getting invited to some party where she may connect with some people and some dudes. So... Yeah. But, you... but of course, there are exceptions. Some girls are be like, yeah, I definitely want to go to that kind of event because... I'm a cloud chaser. Yeah. I don't, I don't, or I don't I'm think... in a certain phase of my life, maybe where I like, I really want to party and go ham and like, yeah, you know, Vadim was kind of cool, maybe, but like, yo, I want to go to this boat party. Yeah. There might be like, a yeah. girl like I think that. another big part of it is that you, is there's just different culture in the cities that we live in. I'd be curious if you lived in like L in Miami for a year or I lived in Toronto for a year because I did notice that when I was in Eastern Europe, uh, places like that, that I didn't really have this issue. Like, I could not bang a chick on the first night, and she might still be like, you know, we have a good date. Sorry, say that again. You did not have the issue of... I, it was less it, it was less of an issue when I was in Eastern Europe, for example. And I think a big part of that is different culture and just less distractions. Like, a chick who lives in Prague, for example, yeah, sure, she, she's getting hit up by guys, but it's not as much. Like, the sexual marketplace isn't as grueling for dudes in those places. I don't know. That's, that's my little take on that. Yeah, there's going to be exceptions to every rule, and I guess you have to decide overall what what rule serves your, you know, general MO best or your happiness best, you know? Because, um, again, I, I guess we talked about this earlier. A big a big thing for me is, like, what, uh, what I teach is what do you feel like doing? Mm. But, okay, so, uh, so the two-date rule, you find that's been working better for you, generally speaking? Yeah, just overall better, more enjoyable for me. Not like, oh, if I pull her tonight, is it going to go down? Is it not? I just don't don't care that to stress about that. And it also takes takes you out of the uh, scarcity mindset. Actually, importantly enough, like I don't need you know this whole I need to get the bang in. I'm actually very very much against that. You know, 
feels great, all that stuff, but like, you know, oftentimes it can that that need can be there for the wrong reasons, you know, just because you want to, I don't know, fill some void temporarily or dealing with shit. Let me, let me get that quick pleasurable bang. I don't think I don't think it um, perpetuates a healthy mindset. Uh, but I've been there, and sometimes, believe me, I have that urge too. I'm like, yo, I just want to fucking surreal this girl tonight <laughs> you know um <laughs> you know or i just need to fuck it yeah i just need to fucking bust a nut and like there are exceptions but objectively i wouldn't say it's a good practice do you do no fap <sighs> nah <laughs> <laughs> you thought about it for a second you're like nah occasionally i'll like do like what the fuck i'm jerking off during this podcast <sighs> i try to limit it i try to limit it i try to do like Every other day, sometimes I'll do three to five days a week tops, but like nothing. Okay. No, yeah. because like you need, you need to stay sane. You know, <laughs> if you're not banging, you need to, you need to stay sane. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, <laughs> returning back, do you? I, I do. Yeah, you do no fab, and how long do you go for? So I get laid. So you get laid. There's just rare exceptions, like if I really can't sleep one night, but like aside from that, yeah. Sometimes you you after like a week or something, you kind of forget about it. I've had that. Yeah. I mean, I try to. Kinda, it kind of goes dormant. So. Well, I mean, for me, like, okay, because I, I, I have a girlfriend, so I'm going to get laid at, like, you know, whenever I see her. So that's like. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have a girlfriend, yeah. then. But even, even, sec, even, when, even when I didn't, like, I usually have at least one or two girls I'm hooking up with. So there's always that, like, safety net. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Uh, whereas, whereas, yeah, I'm trying to stay more focused these days. So, okay. Fair enough. So okay, so I want to I want to get back into the um, the date. So okay, so you have a client. He comes to you. And he says, "Vadim, I have a date set up tomorrow, 8 p.m. at a bar across the street. I have no idea what the fuck to do at all." So as, as far as like logistically speaking, no, or like, like I don't know how what, to be on my date. Yeah, I don't know how to be on my date. Well, that's a problem, bro. <laughs> it is, but a lot of clients <laughs> ask me that, and I'm sure they ask you. Oh, because well. all right, because you deal more with online, right? Um, I so feel, it's, I feel like with any clients, honestly, you you never get this question. Well, I get this question overall because it starts. The date is no different than the approach, and the relationship is no different than the date. I, I always say it's a it's a it's a con, it's a continuation of one another, and yeah, every, everything carries over actually. Uh, and I always link it all together, um, especially considering like, I talk a lot about this whole frame of familiarity. Like, assume you're already with her. Mm -hmm. So it's like often when guys ask me these questions, I'm like, "Well, what would you do if she was your girlfriend?" Right, and that and that quickly gets answered. Of course, you got to reconcile for for the fact that she's not exactly your girlfriend, <laughs> but often a lot of the things you would do to your girlfriend or a friend that maybe you're sleeping with, you would do with a girl you just met for the most part. But um, I guess you, okay, so you get them, you know, from online. They got to get the dates, and they're like, all right, well, what do I what do I do on the dates? And that is that is one of the reasons, you know, we've touched on this before. My beef with online is that a lot of guys, you know, you can help them get on those dates, but then they're like, what do I do on the date? And most of the time they're not converting to day twos because, you know, finally the, the girl has to experience them. Right. Whereas if you're starting a cold approach, you got to do the same thing, but without getting into, without getting into that whole online versus cold approach debate, um, What do you do? Like, like let me give you an <laughs> let me give you an example. Where, where do I start? <laughs> That's uh, like it, saying like, how do I interact with women? I know it's, it's, it's <laughs> well, it's it's a, it's a tough question to answer, but you know, a lot of guys are confused about this. So let just me, be cool, bro. Just be alpha. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, all right, so I'll give you an example. So, for example, me, I'm on a date, right? Yeah. What, what am I going to do on a date? Well, yeah, like if a student asked you, like, I'm curious, okay, so how would how would I answer this question? I would say, what? Um, don't give a shit. Like, just fuck around. Just crack jokes, right? Just just have fun. Just say whatever comes to your mind. Just be loose. Don't be uptight. Don't feel like you have to stick to a script. Don't feel like you have to stick to any topics. You can bridge topics. So, for example, you know, we're talking about something. I ask you about no fat. You can do that. Like, you can just jump topics randomly. You don't have to, like, okay, now we're talking about work. Now I can only talk about work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second just, thing. Just improvise for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Se second thing. Build sexual tension. So, try to build as much sexual tension as possible. So that's like a really big thing I focus on uh, is just like strong eye contact, right? Slowing down your speech, like kind of making jokes based on what she says. Like she's like, oh, you know, it was really hard to get here. I'd be like, that's what she said. Like stuff like that. Like I try to make the conversation as sexual as possible and build as much sexual tension as possible. So, okay. Interesting you say that. I'm, I'm going to comment on that. In the okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, three, 
Uh, I would say also don't talk about yourself a lot. Ask her questions instead. So a lot of guys get into this habit of they just ramble on about themselves. I do this. I do that. No one gives a shit. She doesn't give a shit. Instead, ask her questions about herself, but questions that you're interested in knowing. So I'm never going to ask a girl like, oh, you know, uh, what do you do for work? Instead, I might ask her more like uh, more like interesting question to her. Like, she, she, like let's say she's uh, from like, I don't know, let's say Brazil or like let's say she's from Colombia. Right. I might be like, oh, cool. Like, are you familiar with Pablo? She'd be like, what? Like Escobar, right? She's like, no, like that was back in the day, blah, blah. I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, cool. Is your family? In-? Like, I'll just ask random shit that like might make me curious. Uh, so just basically piquing my curiosity. Uh, I might ask her, what are some of your bad date stories? Because I always love hearing those stories. And then I'll just troll. She'd be like, yeah, I went on this date with this guy. I'm like, damn. And he had a really small dick, you say? She's like, no, I never said that. I'm like, oh, I just thought you did. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'll fuck with her a little bit. And um, I think the you know last component is going for the pool in the smooth way as possible. You know, once you build a lot of sexual tension, maybe even get the make out, I would just say, um, let's go somewhere else. I know a cool spot, super romantic, and just lead her back to your place. Um, so that's that's just kind of very roundabout way I would answer that question. So I'm just okay. curious. Yeah, that gives me some insight. So yeah. I guess like I'll just I'll just talk about like the the the, the bear the bear structure at least from one perspective. Um, that was one of the things actually noted down on this last boot camp I did because <clears throat> I had to just you know with, I feel like with every student you have to sometimes explain it in a different way and sometimes you have these like breakthroughs like oh you can look at it this way as well which is cool um because this was a student who actually um was quite gamey okay so I get a whole variety of students and I would say these are more of a minority um, but I had a student who was quite gamey, so he was doing a bunch of like, you know, forced stuff, and which which actually made me wonder, you know, how how many guys, you know, these days are there out there that are like doing like forced gamey stuff? I definitely ran into a few in, in Miami here, oh. and of course Toronto has its share, but it it, it kind of worried me. Um, but um, so I, I had to explain it to him like this. I'm like, and this kind of ties in with what you were saying. One, I say genuinely get to know her, okay? Because often I see guys in these interactions and they're like, they're not genuinely trying to get to know the girl. They're forcing random topics just for the sake of going through the motions. And because they don't care, they're not present about what she's actually saying. And then in the process, so, you know, double whammy. And then in the process, they're also like thinking about some next thing that's forced, that's going to, I don't know, somehow amp things up, and the whole feel, the whole thing is just like fake and forced. And she, of course, feels it because I always, I always say, well, if someone did that to you, was talking to you like this, how would you feel? You know, mm. like that they're not really present and not there. So yes, talk about things you genuinely, to your point, you want to talk about. Okay, like I'll ask the most, I'll ask all kinds of questions, whether they're basic and quote unquote boring as fuck, or whether they're super interesting, intriguing as fuck. As long as I'm interested in it, you mm-hmm. know, I have some question about her accounting job that I'm super interested in. I'll be like, yo, tell me about this thing. I'm not going to burden her. You know, it's <laughs> another thing I, I tell guys not to do. Don't burden the girls. Don't fucking burden. The Can girls. you expand on that a little bit? Uh, sure. I will in a sec. Let me, let me mm-hmm. give you the, the structure. So it's like, talk about what you genuinely, <clears throat> what you genuinely want to talk about and get to know her. And like, you know, with this one student, there was just like, amazing shift that I saw in the second day game session um, where he was just present. It was flowing more. Like I was listening in, I listened in with my students and I'm like, bro, I was interested in the interaction. Whereas before I was like, I couldn't pay attention here. You have me interested. So if I'm interested, she must be interested. Right. So it was flowing. And then as it's flowing, right. I say, okay, find moments to spike that sexual tension. Right. And that's a whole discussion in itself. But the point is, sprinkle it in. And that's one thing I want to say, uh, big words of caution. Um, I say keep that shit to a minimum. When I say minimum, I say 70-30. 30% sprinkle it in here and there. You only need to do it so many times for her to realize, yo, he's that guy. And when you leave her wanting more for that next spike, it actually creates a very beautiful contrast. Less is more, less is more. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Um, it's kind of like when you're with your boys, right? You're not like constantly bantering. You have real conversations, and then occasionally you'll do some bantering, and that's what keeps it like. I like, try. I try to build as much sexual tension with my boys as possible. <laughs> Johnny, yeah, how you been, bro? Uh, wait, and what was the last point? So yeah, so genuinely get to know her, spike her emotions periodically, slash flirt. Um, have fun, do things on your terms. So stuff that interests you, you know, like if you want to go to the this other bar, take her to this other bar. Um. And uh, yeah, and ab- abide by the you know the alpha the the the, the big four alpha principles, right? What are those those are um, be confident, <laughs> uh, take the lead, assert yourself, and be dominant in various contexts, whether it's a sexual context. Well, once it evolves to that, um, or semi-sexual or flirtatious, or whether it's just like leading, like yo, let's go to this bar, or uh, hey, waiter. Uh, I want to get that table over there. Come, we're going to get this table. You know, just kind of taking control of the date, not in some domineering, insecure way, but it's like girls want to be there for the experience. They want to go along for the ride. So they want you to to offer that to them. You don't want to be doing shit like, I don't know, uh, what, what, what kind of bar do you want to check out? There's like a few bars in this area. Like, no, here's the second bar we should go to. Let's go. So leading, dominant, asserting. Um, if she's vaping and you and, and you don't want her to vape, be like, "Yo, can you do me a favor? Can you stop the vaping?" I actually had this on an Insta date with my student uh, uh, here in Miami. This girl's vaping at the table. I was like, "Yo, I can't, I can't handle it." First, she was kind of like giving me. Wait, some really, shit. you were just vaping earlier, huh? You were just vaping earlier. No, like the the um, not the weed vapes, uh, the, um, like the cigarettes. No, like the ones, like the flavored ones. Oh, okay. Like if I inhale too much of that, like oh, okay. I don't know what they fucking put in those. Like the ones get fucked. So she was giving me a little shit and I was like, no, put it away. Like, or, or I'm leaving. Like, very simple, right? So there's various ways in which those alpha qualities can manifest. Mm. Those are key. So that's kind of the general structure. Get to know her on your own terms, genuinely. Uh, Sprinkle in sexual tension and uh, at the alpha stuff. Don't forget it. That's like the backbone, you know, okay. of being uh, of being an attractive man, essentially. What about okay? So you mentioned you had a student who made the oh, and sorry, you were asking about burdening, right? Yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, I see this. I see this too often. It pains me. Um, like guys are always just burdening girls. And I, I was telling, I was telling you earlier, I was telling Alex earlier, an exercise I like to do is. Um, I tell them, how would you feel like, how would you feel if a guy was doing this to you? Right. So like not a gay dude trying to pick you up, but like, if you've ever been like at a party or ever met guys that are just trying to like, you know, vibe with you, whatever, talk to you, or maybe they're trying to sell you something like a, a bad salesman. Right. And I say, okay, what would you do if like he was doing this? If he was, I don't know, being forced and fake like this or whether, you know, he was just talking nonstop, you know? Um, like guys like talk fast or fast talking fast. That's another like burdensome thing or asking like very broad questions like, Hey, uh, you're from New York. Uh, yeah. I might be going there next week. What is there to do in New York? Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what if somebody asked you, what is there to do in New York? How do you, where do you start? Like, are we talking dining? Are we talking fine dining? Are we talking bars, clubs, parks, zoos, you know, boat tours, ballet. You want to go to the theater? Like, why are you asking these broad questions, right? So, or the way they position themselves. Like, sometimes they'll stand, they'll block the girl from enjoying her experience at night, you know? Like, when you're at a venue, you want to just, like, feel unencumbered and free and just enjoy the, the, the stimulus, the music, your friends. Your friends might be to the side. And these guys just, like, stand there and they block them in the, in the, the man-to-woman frame. And they're just, like, with the piercing eye contact and just talking nonstop to her, engaging, when she's just, like, trying to, like, chill. So I'm like, yo, pretend you're part of the group. And if you're part of the group, you don't need to be talking to her the whole time. You can just like hang back, check your phone, chill, dance, talk to her a little bit more. Take a pause, talk to her a little bit more every now and again, right? So burdening, man. Don't burden them. Don't burden the girls. Mm. Nobody wants to be burdened in social situations. Nobody wants to be burdened. Uh, Which is why I always say treat the night, for example, it's a good you know, speaking of night game, treat the night as one big flowing party that you 
that like a friend of yours is throwing and you're like acquainted with people where you feel confident enough to just like talk to everybody. Right. So you could just like, you know, move from set to set, stay in set if you want leave, come back, come back as often as you want until they tell you to fuck off, you know, cause guys are like, I don't know, like how, how long should I stay? I'm like, well, imagine they're your friends. You can stay as long as you want until they tell you to fuck off. Because most guys can't like can't calibrate, right? It takes time to calibrate. So until then, I say, until you know, until you don't know, sorry, until you know, you don't know. Until they tell you, fuck off, we don't want you here, you don't know. You don't know. And the beautiful thing at night is like, as long as you're giving them space, like I said, not burning and checking in, you can re-engage, you can stay in there. You know, I tell my students, just hang back, dance in the group, chat with the people in the group. Mm. So um, It's quite different than me. I would, I would say that me, more often than not, what I do is, uh, if I'm at a, like, a venue or something like yeah, that, yeah. I'll go in and I'll like, okay, hot girl, talk to her. If I can, isolate. If I can, make out. Uh, if I get any non-compliance at that point, I'll just get the phone number. Uh, I try to make plans with her. But I'll typically, and then I'll, once I get as far as I can with that chick, I'll just move on to a different one. And ideally, mm-hmm. throughout the night, I want to have as many you know, high compliance numbers as possible. And then just mass text them that night and see who's biting. So that's kind of been like my night game approach. I typically won't like, I don't know, like how do you say it? Like I won't like, you know, kind of like go back and approach the same chick multiple times or something like that. I'll just typically, okay, at this point, I got as far as I can with her. Now it's time to go for the next one and so on. And then if I run into her organically, then that's a different story. Well, yeah, part, yeah, no, part of this, uh, part of this is organic. Some of it could be somewhat, you know, conscious, like, Let's say you get separated from your girl at some point and you guys were vibing and it was, it was kind of good. You know, let's mm. say you spent 10 minutes with her. She got separated. Her friend took her because they had to, I don't know, repark the car or whatever. Mm. They're back. I might think to myself, well, you know, maybe I'll bump into this girl, but maybe I'll be like, oh, uh, let's see if I can find that girl. Like, see if I can re-engage her, right? Uh, and then you can just strengthen the rapport more, the whole dynamic. And of course, if you're trying to, you know, take the girl home at the end of the night, trying to pull, then, uh, then certainly you're going to want to commit and stay in that set for like the last hour, like the last hour of the night, hour and a half, maybe I say, stay, stay with one set. If you're trying to pull or if you're trying to get a couple of good leads, you know, but like longer, longer is better. You know, I'd rather have like a few good long sets that I'm enjoying than, than bouncing around. So just to clarify how i mean you're trying like isolating is cool yeah mm. like at some point I, you know i like to isolate i like to move them around have an experience with them <clears throat> maybe make out maybe not if it feels right making out it's not that important um you know dance whatever but how long how long are you staying in there with them and what if you know really like like when you say theory. isolate well how do you get to that isolation point because a lot of guys you know, sometimes you can isolate a girl sooner, but sometimes you can't. Like a lot of that just depends on the vibe and the level of compliance I'm getting from the chick. Uh, you know, if I'm getting super high compliance, you could do it pretty fast. You could, it's... or latter stages of the night when they're like more emotionally aroused. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I generally speaking, though, I won't like. And I guess that's like the one. Let me ask you this question: Do you? Uh, what most? I'm assuming most of your uh, whatever ladies they come from uh, phone numbers, right? Or is it a lot of same night same night polls or whatever? Uh, it's a good question. Maybe, maybe 50, 50. Really? Okay. For me, it's more like 90, 10, like mo- vast majority is from phone numbers. From phone numbers. Yeah. Maybe they're more phone. Num- I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, the vast majority, so you don't try to pull. No, sometimes I do, but sometimes it's just like, whatever. It's just not practical. Yeah. I mean, t- yeah. I mean, to be honest, uh, I feel like if you're trying to pull, you have to commit to that <clears throat> as far as your lifestyle that period of time like commit to the late nights yeah yeah, and all that problem, you yeah. know and yeah to be honest i usually prefer just like getting a solid number and setting up a date over same night polls sometimes. yeah and these days you're I, I i do do as well right um so it's up to the you know with students obviously i'll teach them both and you know and so with some guys like they they're the opposite right they discount the idea of following up with girls at night I, you know yeah I've they seen think that. it's 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 the pull or nothing which which is does make sense but um yeah i'll teach them both and then you can decide based on 
where you're at as far as learning goes, where, you know, where you're at as far as priorities and lifestyle goes, you know, do, do what, do what makes sense. Yeah. Some, some guys are, you know, they want to be able to do that when they travel. So it's cool to pull, uh, but you can set up dates when you travel too. Depends of course, how long you're in the city, right? You're not... If you're like there for three days, you know, setting up dates could be tricky. It definitely can be. All right. Before we move on to the next topic, I want to answer any questions we have. So let's, uh, Answer some questions and move some on. Questions. We'll move on to uh, the next topic I have in my mind. Sure, we got a bunch. All right, let's, um, let's go through them. If we had a one night stand with a girl from a bar, how do you keep them around? So it's a retention question. If you have a one night stand with a girl from a bar, how do you keep them around? Like, how do you make sure that you see them again? Yeah. Um, well, sometimes you can't make sure of that. Sometimes um... <laughs> you get to sign a contract. Which <laughs> leaves. Yeah, sometimes I'm committing to at least three dates with you. <laughs> sometimes, due due to various factors at play that may not even be in your control, um, you might not see her again. You know, she might be traveling. She might be seeing a guy, and you know, it's getting serious. But but you know, she she wanted to be out tonight and. Decided to get late, but it's like not a day two. She might be in some fucking arrangement. Like I had this this chick in Chicago in her thirties who was like um, with some dude, but it's like platonic. Like we're not even platonic. Like I don't know. They're not having sex. Long story short, <laughs> but he's cool with her going. You know, going around and like getting laid. But she's got a one night rule. You know, she's <laughs> like, you know, I like you. You know, I enjoyed myself, but like. I'm sorry, babe. This this is only a one time thing, and you know some girls they they might regret it. They might have been drunk, right? All kinds of scenarios. Sometimes you basically cannot control it. Yeah. Uh, as far as what you can control is building more rapport, showing her you're not judgmental, uh -huh. and not being judgmental to begin with. Um, rapport, Pl making some more concrete plans, not giving her any indication that you're a player. Um. Which, if you're pulling her that night, I mean, if it's organic, she might not necessarily deduce that you that you are some player or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, those are the things you can control. I mean, what else? Am I, I, would, something I, would, here? I would add a few things. I would add um, if she sleeps over just the next day, like something as small as going out for coffee or breakfast can make a big difference. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, That's a good one. Another actually. thing, or if she's not sleeping over right after sex, like cuddle with her for like half an hour, an hour, like something like so she doesn't leave right after the bang. I think that's a big thing. Also, just signaling. Yeah, I let them, yeah, let them sleep over. Commu actually. Communicating that this is more, that you don't want just a one night stand. Like sometimes girls often take the lead from the guy. So saying that this is more like yeah, like I had so much fun. Like we should do this again. Like communicating to her that you want to see her again. This is not just a one night stand for you. Um, I think those are big ones. Um, yeah, and I guess the contract is the uh, the last one. If you get her to sign a contract, yeah. then uh, she has no choice. She's legally obligated. You can take her to court. Yeah. <laughs> Your Honor, I was promised three dates with this girl. She only showed up for two of them. The I mean, I'm going I'm to need the uh, officer to uh, force her to go on another date with me. No, I mean, those the, are the ones the off the top of my head. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a good point. The last one, actually. And, and I, I generally practice this um, sooner than later is letting the girl know you like her, right? Which is, you know, it's funny. At some point, you start doing a lot of things that would be considered chody. Um, mm. like if you're starting out, like don't tell the girl you like her, don't give her compliments. And it's like, you find yourself actually doing shit like that. So yeah, telling yeah, her, I give compliments all the time. Yeah. Compliment, like genuine shit, right? Compliments. Uh, I tell her, I like her. This one girl, you know, in Toronto recently, like we had a fucking amazing connection, really fun night. And I was like, and initially I actually didn't think much of her. I thought she was just some like drunk party girl. Right. And then, you know, she's as she was sobering up. It's like, I started seeing these like other sides of her. I was like, whoa. I told her, I was like, yo, you kind of like threw me off there. Like I started like liking you. Um, I'm like, yeah, I'm down to see you again. I mean, yeah, we we're basically kind of making some like tentative plans. So yeah, all those things. Oh, the one last one I want to add is yeah. texting her afterwards. So uh, getting that text in like that, like the day or the night she leaves, like, hey, that was fun. Like communicate because if you don't text her, she yes. might just assume that it was a one night stand. Yes. So hitting yes. her up like that day or that night, I think can be key versus some guys, they wait a few days and the girl makes the mental assumption. Oh, this was just a one night stand. And then the guy texts them three days later and she's like, why is he texting me? It was just a one night stand. 
So I think kind of getting to her before she can make that assumption is key. Yeah, and I mean, again, delicate balance, like not being like too needy or something um, the next day, but like, you know, one casual message um, the next day or the day after, something like mildly amusing or, or real. Um, yeah. I still have a boner. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's something else I was going to add to that. Um I forgot. I mean, I think we, we I think we covered some some good ground. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it helps being good in bed. It definitely helps. Yes. So guys, you know, like do, take, take 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 this part of it seriously. Like do like I I'm not going to be doing any demos on YouTube. <laughs> Sadly, I don't think uh, Alex is is either, but Bro, like, that was the part 2 of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you think that what do you think the demonstration was? <laughs> but like why do you think we have three cameras yeah yeah i like, know no it's, it's a serious <laughs> setup but like yeah research this you know take it seriously porn actually really really helped me back in the day i was watching there's some good demonstration videos on pornhub yeah you ever watch those like there's ones no but i remember running running across this like course five yeah. six years ago on one of those like mega platforms i I, lo I lost it i don't even remember the name and it was basically like everything just demoed for you by these yeah, porn stars yeah, yeah. i'm like this is fucking brilliant there, there's a bunch yeah there's this like asian guy he's like super he's like all right guys so this is where the clip is and now i'm eating the clip <laughs> like, he, he goes into extreme detail uh yeah also the book you ever read the book sex god but yeah yeah that's like like we should emphasize this kind of shit like i don't i, I guess i i haven't enough i feel like in my videos but no like, it's, it's definitely important to be so good, fucking though. important so important and like take the lead and I, I like to balance one thing I'll throw out there. I like to balance edgy and affectionate, you know, or edgy and like delicate kind of thing. Um, very, very powerful stuff. You know, on the one hand, you, you know, you're kind of like putting her, her uh, hair behind her ear and like cupping her face and like, I don't know, saying some like delicate shit, calling her baby. On the other hand, it's like rough, dirty talk and all that. Just kind of blending it whenever you feel like it. Okay. All right. Yeah. What's the uh, – Go ahead. Uh, what was that thing you said? There was something else you were going to add? I was asking if you've uh, read The Sex God Method. No, no. What is it? It's a good book. It's about sex. Okay. I'll sex send you a PDF. Me yeah, send it. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. That's okay. a good one. Uh, all right. What's the next question? It. The typical, what's your lay count, Vadim? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I – I stopped keeping track at 37. <laughs> I don't remember when that was. <laughs> at 37, like the number 37? It was either 33 or 37 I stopped counting. It's such a random number. <laughs> I think I stopped counting around 40 or something, 40 or 50. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it was something in the 30s. I remember I was like, this, this is unproductive. But you know what? It would be cool. I always thought it would be cool to have, as, as weird as this probably sounds from a, mainstream perspective um to have like a to have like a journal or spreadsheet right not not for any sociopathic purposes where it's like yo bro i'm a 221 um i know quite i know people who have that yeah no i i also but like not for those purposes but more like to reflect back on the journey and like see the in, like it's, a lot of it is a blur for now and yeah. i, and no, I, that, I that can kind of revisit it and yeah, like me too See, like, who are these girls and what happened? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, wish, I wish I had that too. So I guess it's kind of like a, like a, like a diary almost. I met a German girl. All right, this was like 2013 when I was actually around the time I was starting my channel, and uh, she was cool. We ended up hanging out in like various cities actually. But uh, she had a fucking diary, and then she sends me this entry of of me. It's like here you are, your number like 32 or something, and there was like a little diary entry in German at the time, like. I didn't have the, the, the time to, like, to, the to translate, but I was like, I'm curious to see like what she said in this diary. I'd, lo I'd love to see if she, she has it and she could send it to me again. But I was like, that's jokes. <laughs> Go Germans. All right, what's the, what's the next one? Some of the kinkiest tricks I ever met were like Germans or Austrians. Yeah? yeah. What percentage of nights do you end up pulling and what percentage of your pulls results in closes? Also, questions that are not productive, as I tell guys. Um, I don't know about that, but I would say normally, conversion-wise, if you meet a girl, I would say on average, 
from the amount of girls you, I, I would approach, I would say 20 to 25 percent will result in a date. Cool. And then from there, maybe 50 will result in sex. But see, this is not a, like I don't encourage this kind of thinking. It's very, it's too. Can, can you expand on that? It's too result. It's too result oriented. It's too like if you're concerned about these kind of stats, like what do you, what what are you doing? I mean, okay, look, it's cool to just be aware of this. Like it, it is interesting to me. Like here is the number of girls I'll convert. Right. Yeah. The problem is like it's an interesting statistic, right? For my personal reasons, for guys I want to learn, because you don't need to get every girl. You're not going to get every girl, even if everything is maximized on your end. Some girls will like you, and some are just gonna have you know a lot of shit going on on the girls' end. She's not emotionally available. She's got a boyfriend. Um, she just started seeing a guy. You caught her at the wrong time of the day when she was in a rush or in a weird headspace because her guinea pig died. So, like, I hate when their guinea pigs die. Yeah, it's fucking. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a cog block and a half. So it's like, yeah, it's cool to know these things, and it's cool to know that you're not gonna like convert all the girls. Um, but at the same time, I don't like it when guys are like obsessed with these stats. Am I hitting the stats? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the it's reason like focus on your focus on the experience and on your growth. I mean, that's that's the most important part. Yeah, I th I think it can be good and bad. I think it'd be good if you're just like you know to to get an idea of like okay, is there something I'm doing that's way off in my process? Yeah, yeah. Like I sometimes I have clients where like you know they'll be like yeah you know I'm only getting like you know uh, one date out of my uh, whatever you know my uh, one day to day from Tinder. I'll be like, okay, how many matches are you getting? They're like, I don't know, five matches a day. I'm like, that's actually really good. That's actually really good. Yeah, or yeah. versus they're getting 100, that's really bad, right? So, you know, kind of helps you sometimes narrow down where the kink in the armor is. You're right, you're right. For those for those purposes, it isn't. But yeah, I think if you OCD about it and you're like obsessing, like, fuck, if this one rejects me, my ratio goes down. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> for how, the love of God, you can't reject me. The ratio. Yeah, or how long is it taking to get to get good? Well, well, define good first of all. Second of all, um, are you are you enjoying this journey? You know, uh, it's like you're going to be evolving gradually, and it is important to be in check with your growth and what you're doing. Which is why I stress the idea. Something we should talk about in a bit, actually, yeah. uh, like the process of getting good. Um, which is why I stress deliberate practice. Right? Deliberate practice meaning you're not just practicing. You are deliberately practicing, meaning you are deliberately trying to figure out, push your comfort zone, broaden your horizons, push yourself, analyze your shit. You know, this applies to any discipline, right? Um, to get good. I see too many guys just going through through the motions, just like just going out for the sake of going out, which if you're okay with the proportionate results, if you're okay with that, that's fine. I'm not here to dictate, take it seriously, bro. But just don't be delusional. There's all there's, there's too much of the wrong kind of delusion. Well, let's let's unpack that. This is an interesting topic. So um, let's talk a little bit more about deliberate process. practice. Yeah, yeah, the process of being yeah. good. Yeah. So first of all, I think um, like if someone were to ask me, how do I get good? Yeah. Okay. Assuming you want to get good, right? That's something that's not very clear to a lot of guys, and something you need to like ask yourself over the years, as you as you figure your shit out and. You know, peel the layers and do your therapy and all that stuff. Um, so assuming you do want to get good, first, I like to say start with the mindset of let's see what happens. This is like one of my big philosophies. Let's see what happens. You're the curious scientist. Let's just see what happens. Every, it's not about this these expectations and this big deal and all that stuff. It's just like, let's see what happens. Okay. So that's, that's the first mindset that I start with. Uh, the second thing is commit, commit to the process. If you do not commit to something in your mind, uh, generally speaking on a macro level and a micro level, like generally I am committing the next six months to a year into this area of my life. Okay. Micro, how many times a day am I, uh, a week am I committing? How many hours? Like, I got a full-time job, 40 hours. Am I able to commit the, ne the next 30 hours in a week to properly doing this, going out, analyzing, following up, you know, watching Alex's, uh, you know, sex videos, uh, reading some book on seduction that Vadim recommended. Like, are you committing to all this? Like, are you wholeheartedly committing, you know, and like going, and then the next part is, because if you don't commit, you will not do it. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you know, like when I'm just like going to the grocery store, you know, or am I running my errands because I want to be organic? I'll just like approach a girl here and there. It's like, no, you won't. Number one, because you're not in the headspace of approaching. And number two, you're not going to build any momentum. So you won't actually grow. You need momentum and flow to actually tap into these like, you know, sides of you or these depths of you to actually grow and push um, what's possible. So flow. So, yeah. So commitment consistent, which leads to consistency. uh, And then you want to build flow when you are out. And the last part is deliberate practice. And you're going out, you're constantly pushing, thinking critically, analyzing, um, et cetera, while still trying to have fun and be present to the moment. And that's that's actually the paradox sometimes for a lot of guys. How, how do you... Which is the, my whole thing, like, do what you feel like. They're like, Vadim, how do I do what I feel like while also being serious? I'm like, you can do both. Can I mean, there's definitely a lot of paradoxes in game. Yeah, there are. Exactly, there are. Yeah. Uh, so deliberate, deliberate practice. So, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just to finalize, cause I had a student It's like, how do I have this whole mentality of like, let's, let's just see what happens. You know, just like, let's just see what happens with like, I'm being, you know, committed and disciplined and all that. They're not mutually exclusive. They, they, they actually can go hand in hand. You can be very disciplined and committed, but at the same time, you're not taking it seriously you're taking the process seriously but you're not taking it seriously there's no heavy expectations on the outcomes and you know just beating yourself up and like it has to happen this way or else it's like no none of it means shit let's just see what happens let's just see what happens and then follow follow the process as you see what happens still follow the process take the process seriously don't take it seriously so when you say I want to I want to unpack one of them, you say deliberate practice. You mean yeah. uh, pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, like when you're out? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, it's pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone when you're out. It is, um, yeah, like you know, uh, expanding your horizons, broadening your comfort zone, things that are like new, interesting, unique to you, challenging, obviously, scary. Uh, two, it is um, analyzing your nights whether it's in your head or journaling, whatever helps you organize your thoughts. And it is doing supplementary work. You know, the sex videos, the book, the YouTube video, the course. And then there's the, and then there's following up with the girls trying to make sense of that. So it's like, you know, you're not just like, I'm just going to go out, do my little day game sesh three times a week for, for a couple of hours or worse. Like I'll just do the odd approach here and there but yeah i'll do i'll do my session my my three sessions and and that's it and i'll just like approach the girls and like deliver my thing and hope for the best it's Mm. it's it's very it's it's you know these past completely passive delusional approaches uh are not are not productive unless you're completely okay with it that's different you know Hmm. Let me ask you this question. Okay, so we were kind of talking about this before this thing. So let's say you get uh, on a boot camp, you get a client, and let's say he's like super awkward around chicks. He's just like socially awkward. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. He's been with two chicks in his whole life. Maybe he's a virgin. You know, he has no experience. I've so, had those. Yeah, yeah it's a whole spectrum of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how would you? Where do you start with a guy like that? You're talking tough cases. Fairly tough case, yeah. Fairly tough case. Like we're not talking about someone who's autistic, but we're talking someone who's socially very inexperienced and is awkward. Yeah, yeah. Because I would say I would get like, as far as clients go, like maybe 10% are like that. Um, And then you probably have like 10% on the higher end, like the cool, good-looking, normal, experienced guys where it's like a few tweaks and they're crushing it. You know, I had one like... This weekend actually is like I unleashed a monster kind of thing, you know. So it's like ten and ten, and then you know, or maybe fifteen and fifteen, and then you have everything else in the middle, right? The whole spectrum, right? Mm. You know, pretty chill, normal dudes just don't know how to like do some of these things, be more assertive, be more expressive, be more this, be more that. Um, but if you're talking a tough case, I mean, first of all, first of all. I'm 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 actually screening hard. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. These days, I'm actually screening harder for clients. Meaning, I will not take you on the program 
uh, if you're not, if like certain things still need to be done. Okay. Um, it's just a waste of my time, their time and their money. And I'm just, I don't, it, I don't feel good about it. So let's say you don't speak English that well. Okay. I'll okay. be like, spend the next year learning English. Um, I don't know. You need to fix your teeth. I had a guy like that. He had like fucked up teeth. I was mm -hmm. like, bro, you got to fix your teeth. Mm. And he didn't speak English. <laughs> Bro, it was it was bad, right? And okay. well, maybe someone knocked out his teeth because he didn't speak English. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? You know, he, like a lot of work on the voice that needs to be done. I think we talked about this on the last one, where I said voice is like huge, and I'll be like hire a vocal coach. Um, or it depends how bad it is, right? Depends how bad it is. Or I'll say, you know, let's say super overweight. All right, um, you know, work on your health. And, and that for the next year oh. or they're super fucked up therapy bro therapy i think we all need therapy i encourage it to yeah everyone. i agree with that yeah um i've been looking into it these days um it's good to explore your shit it's good to with, with a professional like sure you can do psychedelic trips and like you watch a youtube video and you're like oh i got this insight but like it's really cool actually exploring it and you know for me i can also learn a lot and teach it to to my clients but some guys, it's like they, they 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 have to resolve so much shit before they should be talking to girls. Um, I had a couple of clients like that, and then it's just so unproductive for them, for the girls involved, uh, for me. Where I'm like afterwards, bro, forget pickup, forget pickup. I'm not even kidding. Forget pickup for the next year. You got to do therapy. You got to do, um, I don't know meditation some spiritual growth whatever whatever will help you like unblock this shadow work um i'm actually um gonna look into doing a program like that that my my assistant coach is like really into that and he's developing something so i think it'd be cool to um to launch something like that in the future maybe a mentorship program would be more practical but um so yeah sometimes it's like you're not ready but if they're like on the lower threshold of like they're ready, but yeah. it's tough. Yeah, let's say let's say they speak English, they have fine teeth. Um, they're just, just kind of socially awkward. Yeah, they're just socially awkward and you know virgin. Yeah, you know, like I had a couple of clients like that uh, where they're like pretty normal, just a little, a little like socially shy goofball, super inexperienced or a virgin, but like you know with a decent sense of humor. I'll get them approaching. You got to get the sensitized. I'll tell them just just try genuinely getting to know the girl, and you know, and having that. The serious side of you, the normal side of you. So emotional range is big. I help them tap into that more. Um, you know, push them, obviously, because that builds the confidence, like, into new, unique situations. <laughs> you know, like, get physical with her or re-engage the girl. Uh, and, yeah, slowly I, I teach them, like, spiking or flirting techniques. I'm like, you know, do this. You know, challenge her, you know. Create a little bit of fake drama. Um, say something edgy, you know, uh, so that there's more tension. But start with just go in. Just stay in, just talk to her, get to know her genuinely. If it's at night, don't burden her too much. You know, dance with her. Just kind of get the ball rolling. Yeah. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm here to burden you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't start getting into her life story on the dance floor as she's dancing with her three girlfriends. And, my and, girl and block the, her with your body language. My girl for the night is to create as much of a burden for you as possible. <laughs> I want you to feel so burdened that you feel like you have no choice but to go home with me. And uh, then I will burden you with AIDS. <laughs> I just need to do a video where, where I've always wanted to do that, where you do everything wrong. That'd be fucking hilarious. You you have some funny videos on YouTube. You have um, I like the I like the threesome one. How long ago did you shoot that? That it's an older video, I think. 20, 2013, 20, 2014. Did you guys really have a threesome with that chick? No, no. It could have happened. To be honest, it could have happened. She was into both of us, and we were vibing, and we told her we were doing. But the thing is, like, we had to film a bunch more shit. So we right. kind of got that shot. But then, like, you know, she had to go and we had to get more footage. Oh. Otherwise, you'd have to go through the whole, like, pull process and all that. And 
I don't think I don't think I would want to have a threesome with with a buddy of mine. Right. Yeah, I'm not I'm not down for that. Yeah, neither am I. But I thought I thought it was funny. Okay, like maybe I'll, I'm I'm down to like swing maybe with a dude like I don't know, but like no, 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 no not somebody I know, and not like me and another guy and a girl like that doesn't interest me. Yeah, I did. Uh, I went to a swingers party once. It, yeah. was, it was me and this chick I was hooking up with, and we uh, we swung with this other couple. And uh, is Miami? No, nah, this was back in LA. This was a while ago. Okay. And I remember the dude kept trying to like make small talk with me, which is like really annoying. Like, I'm like, <laughs> during the video? yeah, well, I'm no like, way. he's like, hey man, so no you, you've been in LA for a while? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't want to fucking talk to you. I want, I don't even want you. Just like, just like, go in the corner or something. Like, I don't, I don't want anything to do with you. Like, for me, like the less dudes in the picture is the better. Like I like to keep it like mostly. That's so. That's so jokes. That's yeah, so jokes. Yeah. So this was like a, a like a private party or a club. It was a club. It was a club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I just. I, I just. It happened to me once actually. I, I, by chance. Before I forget, bro, can you pass me that charger? Because I might want to check my phone for some topics. Because I think it's dying. Oh, it might be dead. But uh, it happened by chance actually. I was with. Uh, I was with my girl and we were we were trying to pull threesomes. Okay. And so sometimes we would go out and meet girls and sometimes we would meet girls through her like Tinder Bumble profile, mm-hmm. right? And just set something up. But um but she would she would never tell them directly that we're doing a threesome. She would just kind of be like, "Let's hang out." And then she'd be like, "Oh, hey, well, like either I w- I would meet them the first date or she would pull them back and be like, I'm staying with my friend right now. I'm always a friend. You're never a couple. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, then I flirt with her as well, and and then you just kind of make it happen. But uh, so she met she met this one girl, and this girl for some reason on their first date decided to invite a dude that she had met. Mm. I guess I don't know what she was thinking in her head. I don't know. So I'm like waiting for my girl to pull back, you know. And then she's like, yeah, there's some dude here that she brought. I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm kind of drunk. So they all arrive, and it's it's her, the girl, and this dude, right? Uh, it seems like some, like, cool, normal, you know, normal dude. I think he's a firefighter or some shit. <laughs> uh, I'm like, Hey, yeah. bro, can I check out your hose? <laughs> that would have been good. Um, and I was like, okay, like, what am, what am I supposed to do with this? She's like, well, he just said he wants to make sure, like, wait, we get in okay, and then he'll leave. I was like, all right. And then, like, before I know it, like, everybody just, like, goes in, right? And and then we get in there, and I'm just, like, ch- sitting there chatting with this guy. And then the girls just start making out. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know what to do right now. Like, I feel bad for telling him to leave. It was weird. Because he was kind of a cool dude. And then I go to her. So you told him to leave? I didn't. I didn't yet, oh. right? I, I'm thinking, like, I should, but, like, I kind of feel bad about it because the girl brought him here, and I guess he was expecting some shit. And, you know, normally, like, I'll assert myself if necessary, but in this case, it was strange, dude. And basically, bef- and then I pull my girl aside, and I'm like, yo, what? Like, I, I don't want to fucking have a foursome or some shit. And then she's like, I, I don't know. And as we're talking, before I know it, this girl starts sucking his dick. And then I turn, I'm like, I don't, and I'm like, all right, let's just roll with it. Let's just roll with it. And it was all right. Mm. It was all right. I don't, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind uh, sharing my girl kind of thing. So if you- it's a guy, I don't know. Mm. And it happens in front of me. Kind of, yeah, it kind of turns me on, actually. Oh. To all my viewers, <laughs> the dark side of the Deem Deem. likes to get cooked. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Like, uh, if you're banging, uh, well, if if you're like, and if he's like a normal dude, like I'm not, not some fucking weird ass shit. Right. Um, but yeah, it just kind of fucking happened, and I was like, oh, all right, <laughs> yeah. What's the craziest shit you've ever had happen on a boot camp? Boot camp, crazy shit. Uh... I don't remember. I'd have to think about that one. I mean, I've had various kinds of pulls but nothing that i would consider like crazy you know mm. um but yeah i'd have to, I'd have to uh, reflect on that one reflect on that one yeah i'd have to think about See, that. You, had, you had any uh, well i guess you, you only coach yeah you only yeah, coach yeah. online you had any interesting like i mean uh, student, had, student stories yeah i mean so many I, I don't know i'm trying to think of a good one uh 
Like, should that happen to my clients? Honestly, I'd have to think about that one too. I have, I can remember a whole bunch of shit that happened to me. I remember one time uh, I hooked up with this chick and she like, I was fingering her and she was like harder. I'm like, okay. I started going hard. She's like harder. I'm like, okay. And then at one point she just takes my hand. She's like, no, like this, like to the point where just like beating up her fucking the inside of her uterus. And she's like, I'm going to come. Um, but she's, I'm like, all right. At this point, I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck. My hand's been taking over and she comes and then she's like, ah, she's like, kind of hurts. I was like, no shit. She's like, why did you go so hard? I was like, you gotta be fucking shitting me right now. She's like, it really hurts. I gotta go to the bathroom. She's like in the bathroom for 20 minutes. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then she comes out, she's holding her stomach. She's like, oh, she's like, you fingered me so hard. I started my period. I was like, is that, could that even happen? I don't know. I'm like, you're seriously gonna blame me for this? <laughs> you hijacked my hand, woman. Uh, she went home. I didn't even bang her. I was, it was the most confusing hookup ever. That's, that's fucking trippy. Um, Wait, I had something that came to mind. Oh fuck, I lost it. All right, let's let's take some questions. You ever, you ever? I'm curious. You ever get something? I had this like maybe two, three times that I can remember. One of them, like I, I really specifically remember vividly. I, you know, I pulled this girl. We kind of were vibing well. Um, I mean, not a crazy amount of rapport, to be fair. Oh yeah, Sorry. yeah. Thank you, bro. I forgot the I'm space cadetting. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's a different one. Um, I remember, yeah, so I pull her, not that much report to be fair, but we had a good vibe going, kind of flirtatious. You know, eventually I'd start, you know, e escalating. Um, and I don't know, 15 minutes in, you feel like we were kind of escalating and, and things were normal. She's like, I don't know. I just don't feel anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had shit like that. I was like, like what do you mean? Yeah, I've had shit like that. She's like, I don't know. I'm sorry. Which is like usually if that can happen if it's not on, but if you feel like it's on, like that, I kind of that blew my mind. Yeah, I had one chick who was like, I had a, like I remember a second instance for sure as well. Yeah, go ahead. I had one chick. This speaking of that, I had one chick. We were like on my couch. Where I was like literally eating her out, and she was like, "Your beard tickles too much." I was like, "Oh, I don't, what do you want me?" She's like, "Can you go shave it off?" I'm like, "I'm not shaving my beard like for for like a hookup. Like, there's no way like." I, I haven't not had my facial hair for like, I'm not going to go in the bathroom, fucking shave my style I've had for eight years just for you. Like, and I'm trying to like kind of maneuver my face around it. Like I just stopped eating her out, start making out. She's like, no, it tickles my face now. She's like, she's like trying to like, and it just completely ruins the vibe at all. She's like trying to like restrict my beard. And she's like, I can't do this. It's too ticklish. I was like, let's just bang it out. She's like, I don't know. It's just too ticklish. She's like, and now I think the vibe is ruined. I'm like, yeah, who fucking ruined it? I don't, I don't like, yeah. Would she, would, would she get tickled by your pubic hair as well? Like, what, what, what well, is it? First of all, I don't have, I sh you don't shave your pubes? I trim them, I guess. Yeah. I trim them. Yeah, you well, you the, keep it like bald eagles? That'd yeah, pretty much. You gotta get with the times, dude. Damn. Damn. Some juicy info on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that's where your mind goes. Like while well, telling the story, like hmm, I wonder what Alex's pube situation is. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, that's, that was that's, a funny one. That's trippy. What was um, your What was your story? Which one? You said you have a story. There. I mean, maybe maybe it was the, <laughs> maybe it was the, the swingers one. Uh, I, no, thought, I thought said, I shared it. That's all good. I mean, uh, I was gonna maybe mention. Well, it was the girl. Yeah, that girl who who was like, "Oh, this is trippy." I don't know if this is that crazy to be honest, but like sometimes you'll you'll get like the odd girl, like one I specifically remember who was like, "Be super rough with me." Yeah, like well, super rough, like like, you know, like they they all enjoy it on some level. Something I guess nobody talks about in the mainstream as well because well, it's a, it's, a, it's a delicate topic, but um uh yeah, ninety five percent of them like that. Uh, like it rough and all that but like sometimes you'll get girls that like will specifically like mention it like no like hit me hard slap me hard that kind of shit um and you know you know what's funny man it's like i had this ex okay who was actually a psychologist right mm. and she loved like she loved kinky ass sex she was like wild in bed you know yeah. some of the some of the mildly troubled ones usually are you know the psychologists who are fixing themselves in the process um like like she liked you know being dominated and like shamed or some shit bunch of stuff like but she had trouble reconciling that stuff with all this she was also hardcore feminist to like oh. to a fault yeah. where like you know shit she would say wouldn't make sense 
And like we would, I remember we would have some fight. That was not a healthy relationship. I remember we would have some fights where she'd be like, you know, I enjoy this stuff, you know, in the bedroom and all that, but I feel like that's how you feel about me in person, like that you don't respect me. And ta da da da. She had like these insecurities and, and a bit of an inferiority complex. And I, and I had to have these like logical conversations with her because I, I was just baffled. I'm like, you understand what happens in the bedroom because it's you're wired that way and all that stuff. It's not a reflection of like, you know, how I feel when we're just like hanging out. It doesn't mean I'm going to like shame you and put your face in the pavement and like, I don't know, hit you in public. Like, you, like you don't do that with your girlfriend. <laughs> I'm not going to put you on a leash in public, you know, you're you can still be my equal, you know, here, but in the bedroom, this is kind of what you, and we, and then she would have these like breakthroughs like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. But then she'd have some other insecure. It was, it was wild, man. It was fucking wild. Pretty much. Every like, feminist... so a lot of this like feminist r- r- rhetoric, like some of it is good, but a lot of this hyper feminist rhetoric just fucks girls up, man. Pretty much every hyper feminist chick I've ever known likes to be super, likes it super rough and likes to be degraded. In bed. Absolutely. And then the switch goes off outside of the bedroom. Where they have some insecurity, yeah, like, yeah. you know, no, treat me with respect and like, no, that's not my role. And, and she would be, dude, it was crazy. She would have like, she would tell me like, I love it when you put me in my place and I like, I can feel myself getting wet, you know, mm. if it's an appropriate context, right? Don't just put her, your girl in your place, like for the sake of it to be domineering. Right. But if it's like some appropriate context where you draw a boundary or you're like, whatever, like, yo, um, but she's like, but but I also resent it at the same time. I'm like, why are you resenting something that's normal? Like, this is this this is kind of healthy. It's like it doesn't mean I don't respect you if I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fucking do this on Sundays with you. <laughs> or like, right. you know, it's 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 fucking yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I had this one chick. She was uh, in my most popular video, actually. You know, how do we physically escalate the video that the one video I had that passed a million. Uh, oh yeah dude that that one did well that was smart yeah yeah that, that video was an accident by the way i didn't even want to put that on youtube i thought it was trash you thought it was trash or risky no i thought it was trash content i didn't think it was good I what thought, why why not you didn't think i just because don't a lot of guys want to see that kind of shit yeah because we were just i was mainly fucking around like give her what willy at one point in the video i mean like it was like mainly me fucking around okay, okay. i think that's why i did so well because it's like very organic because it's yeah. like I do now as I watch it back, I'm like, yeah, that part was pretty funny because this thing is you think it's getting all sexual, and it's like I set it up and I'm just like, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, no, that was, yeah, that was but with that, chick, with that chick, I remember with her, like, I was we we, we sometimes would struggle because she she did a few videos with me, and I was like, okay, uh, you know, I can use her name because she's said public in the video. I'm like, Carla, how do we like help guys become better with women? Like, what should a guy do? When he's on a date with you and she's like, well, just be very respectful. Uh, just listen to what she has to say. Uh, don't make a move. You know, be very patient. I'm like, but when I went on a date with you, you liked it when I was super rough and called you my dirty little slut. And she's like, yeah, but that was just me. But most I'm like, like she has such a hard time reconciling that. Yeah, they, so they, they can't. They're not aware. They're, yeah, they're not aware. So um, a, lot, a lot. This is the issue. I guess sometimes with this podcast, a lot of times when I'm like interviewing chicks is the stuff they say is sounds nice in theory but it's not stuff that would actually work on them so i have to like play a psychiatrist and go like deeper and try to like get the good stuff so- yeah you generally like can't ask women for advice they don't know they don't know what works they don't know what they're attracted to if you kind of got guide them through it they might yeah, be like yeah you're right well let's let's not consider my job is guiding them through it and kind of getting to that like good stuff yeah i mean there there are a few that are very like in tune with the stuff but sometimes it's easier than other times but yeah. i find that generally speaking was when you go into specifics that's when you get better answers so when you say something like how does a guy uh you know how does it what should a guy do on a date right you're gonna get a shitty answer but if you say something okay in this one situation if a guy was to do this on a date you would get a better answer right so when you go into specifics and you avoid the generalities that's when you get better feedback from chicks yeah, they, then they can kind of convert it. It becomes you know relatable, real. real in their mind. Yeah, yeah. we should yeah. give them like a multiple choice. Okay, you have options. A guy can do this, a guy can do that, and a guy can do this. Which one of those would turn you on the most? And then you stare at them while they think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what, what are some questions? Let's uh, let's take some questions from the audience. We'll go for another maybe 15 minutes or so. It's a bit of a broad question, but I mean, it's it's actually interesting too. What do you define as doing well with women? What's your definition of a It's a good question. It's a good question. It's an important one. Because 
nobody nobody should uh, should nobody should tell you what the standard is. Actually, it's very subjective. It's yeah, it's somewhat subjective. It's uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's can be completely delusional, obviously, <laughs> but but it's like first and foremost is how well do you do you want to do it with women? Like a lot of my shit comes back to like, what do you want to do? What do you feel like doing? What stage of your life are you at? The moment you're like forcing some shit, um, it's not it's not gonna work. So I don't know. There's there's people there's people I know that are like have like just no interest in this stuff. Like they're okay with like some some girlfriend that they're not that even that into, and they're just interested in their other projects and some like you know female arts company. and crafts. <laughs> whatever you know or like i don't know some pursuit of real estate like what whatever is their hobby or their job whatever it's like they just want some like feminine company that's i like, really like it when i close on a house <laughs> uh they want they just want some feminine company that's like okay and they're just con- content i mean could some of these people be lying to themselves yeah but like you know some people just don't care as much um you know first i, w- I would say a good benchmark is like are you doing shit on your own terms and are you meeting the kind of women you genuinely want to meet to the extent that you want to meet them? No. Whether it's like you want something serious, whether you want to be able to have threesomes, whether you want to, whatever it is that you want. And again, you don't always want, you don't act, always actually want what you think you want. So that's a process of uncovering that in itself. But hopefully we can kind of, we can kind of bridge those two. You figure out what you actually want and and I help teach you the skills to make that happen on your own terms. That's that's to me success with women. Mm. Okay, My, I would I would define even more simply. I would say, are you having the kind of sex life that you want? And that's different things for different people. For some people, it's just having a hot girlfriend that's having the sex life they want. For some people, it's having you know a rotation of chicks. It can be for some guys. For me, for example, I'm not just sex life. Like I would, I would say romantic life in yeah. general. Like as far as connection, experience, everything. Like for me, I don't like running super big rotations. Like you know, my buddy John, he likes having a rotation of ten chicks. I usually don't do more than two or three. You know, like I like to keep it pretty simple. And then like other chicks I hook up with. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. These it, days actually, it's, it's somewhat subjective. But yeah, I mean, I do. Th- I think it comes down to yeah, having the sex and dating life that you want. Are you able to get the quality? Not not a specific girl because you'll never. There's no amount of game that will be able to like. The, you you never get to a point where you're so good where you can point to a chick and just be guaranteed to get her. Yeah, that, but that, uh, can you? Exist. But can you get that type of girl? Right. Let's say this chick right. is someone who's either very physically attractive, or maybe she is. You like chicks who are professional, like chicks who are like or whatever. Like, can you get that type of girl? And if the answer is yes, then you know, I think you're there. Exactly. If if, you, if you're getting the things you you want, and it starts with what I think I want, but slowly you figure it out, then then you're good. Um, right now, I've gotten to a point where it's like, you know, yeah, you're right. Like rotations are actually stressful to manage and not not interesting anymore it's either yeah i guess i got to this point where it's like it's either serious or i'm not that interested but serious with the side of threesomes that's that's (laughs) um, that's an integral part um you know it doesn't have to happen every week but like i need i will need the variety in the over the course of the the relationship but i'll do it with you and i don't want to emotionally invest into other girls and like it's so hard to find a good connection so it's just it's just not worth it. It's just stressful. It's like the ROI is not not worth it. But uh, ten ten girls rotation ten girls that keep, sounds so stressful. It's like running a he, business. She sometimes does fifteen to twenty. Let me ask you this question: Why do you keep, why do you keep why do you keep living in Canada? Why don't you move to like I don't know like Southeast Asia, or South America? Like, what makes you stay in Canada? I love Toronto. It's great. really it's a great fucking city. Uh, not only for for women in game, just overall. And, like it's know, expensive. It's cold. No. It's cold in the winters, um, but I don't mind it that much. Uh, but, you know, if I can, like, get away a few times, you know, to Miami, to Mexico um, in the winter, I'm happy. And then, like, May until end of October, like, seven months out of the year, it's it's quite nice. Even, okay. even November and December, I like it. Also, like, that's where, like, most of my network, friends, family are. Okay. So I've actually been thinking about that. And, and, I'll, and I'll say this to guys, you know, at some point, find a hub. You know, I guess for you it's Miami now. Huh? Find a hub. This this whole like moving moving around stuff. I guess it depends on like where you're at in, in your life. But at some point for me, that's kind of like distracting. And 
I like to be where I, where I have like, I think ultimately you come back to where you like know people and where you, where you're most connected to. Okay. I, th I think ultimately. Yeah. Okay. Unless like you're immigrating from some country, you know, to like a first world country, then that's <laughs> probably your new home. Right? <laughs> My hub is Kabul, Afghanistan. But yeah, I, bro, I, come I, through, I, come I, through to Toronto. I really like the ISIS. <laughs> I like it when they when they when they're kicked out and then they come back. Yeah. That's what uh, that's what I like. Come ISIS. through to Toronto one of these days. Yeah, like, perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, it'll be, it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good time. Yeah. yeah, if I do come, it'll be like in July or August. Yeah, come in the summers, yeah. uh, June, July, August, September. Are fucking amazing. Why did you move to Miami from LA? I wanted to ask you. Oh uh, well, I didn't move from. Sorry, Miami. sorry, to Miami from LA. So, yeah, so I didn't move directly to Miami. I moved to Texas. So I wanted to get out of L.A., uh, and I moved to Austin. I lived there for five months, yeah. and I got a little tired of Texas. There was a few things that eh, made me want to get out. So I want to try uh, – I always knew I have to live somewhere warm because I hate the cold. So my options were like Phoenix, uh, New Orleans, uh, Orlando, Miami maybe at that point. Uh, maybe like Savannah, Georgia. I don't know. So I was like, all right. Savannah, let... Savannah's pretty charming. Yeah, Savannah's cool. <laughs> but, so I was like, all right, let me try Miami. Let me see how it goes. And I just wound up staying here. And then you know, eventually it became like. Why, well, did you, why did you leave L.A.? You didn't like it? Got tired of it. And I think it was a good decision seeing where L.A. is now in terms of, you know, whatever, the climate there. But uh, Pandemics. Just, just because, well, now L.A. is a shithole. I have heard this, and I wonder, is it an exaggeration, or is it like that? Bad? From all the friends who I have living there, they all say the same thing. It's become a shithole. The homeless people are just swarming everywhere. Yeah, Everything is that. closed. Everyone's yeah. depressed. Um, you know, it's like rent is expensive. No one can afford to live there. Just like fucking, now you got the looting going up in SF. It's only a matter of time before that comes down to LA. Looting in SF? Yeah. Shit. Oh, you mean like all these like Walgreens and like Targets? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I think I mean anyway. That's that's a whole. I can go on a whole tangent yeah. for why I think California got fucked up, which I think is a real shame. But on um, the next podcast, no. The reason I got that, but none of that was happening when I was there. I just want to. I was. I lived in LA for six years. Um, I honestly got tired of it. Like people in LA are pretty flaky, pretty superficial. I thought I'd meet, uh, you know, meet some nice Texas people, and I moved to Texas, and then you know. I got tired of Texas, so I was like, let me move down to Miami. Now, uh, Miami is quite similar to LA in a lot of ways, so, but there's some things I like more about Miami. The summers, bro. How do you deal with the summers? Here? I don't mind the heat. Yeah? Yeah. Fuck. I don't like the cold, but I don't mind the heat. In the winter, more. Miami's nice, but in the summer, I just, I couldn't. I, couldn't. I don't mind it, honestly. Yeah? yeah? How does your dog survive? <laughs> he, he does good, man. People people always ask me that question. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Shit. But yeah, let's let's take some questions in rapid fire. Let's try to get through like maybe five, ten questions. Sure. Uh, what aims thought on black pill? Black black pill? Yeah. What are your thoughts on black Maybe you'd guys? have to uh, explain <laughs> it, Alex. A black you know black pill concept is the idea well, that what is black is like is that like book uh past red pill like red pills already wore it it's past red, red pill yeah it's the oh idea that looks are the only things that matter and your successful women is purely determined by your looks just Mo looks or looks money status uh i guess looks money status i would say and they they don't they most of them some of them believe game doesn't even exist man, these, these things worry me man oh that's all i'm gonna say that's absurd <laughs> It's pretty crazy, yeah. It's, it's, it's as absurd as saying that gravity doesn't exist. I can't believe these things even. You've never seen a debate side down with the black pillars? No. no. Uh, Jesus. So there, just someone like... doesn't watch my channel enough. Um, oh, you had a debate? Yeah, I debated black pillars. Dude, I got to watch that. Yeah, I've done that many times. Well, what are they saying? Like, they just believe. I went out a few times and girls rejected me, therefore, it looks. That looks matter. They, no, they they'll, 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 they'll no. I mean, they'll try to like use studies. They'll be like, oh, there's a study that suggests that only one percent of men on Tinder get matches. Those chicks only want good looking guys, or like, oh, no one I know has ever, you know, who's uh, unattractive has ever been successful with girls. Stuff like that. They just these are these are people that just want to continue. They actually enjoy playing the victim. Uh, you get so attached to the, the idea, the identity of a victim that you need to keep perpetuating it because it's the bar that you've set for yourself and moving past it actually terrifies you, moving past that paradigm. I had a client uh, who, it was, it was wild, man. He was so convinced with, so, okay, so on the one hand, he was very, very indoctrinated into this idea of looks being like the biggest thing. You know, he had some plastic surgery done as well. But then, like, 
we would have these talks and he, he would read up on this and he would understand on some level that like, no, it's not that important. But then he would have these episodes where he's like, no, but wait. And he would try to like get more proof from the internet or wherever else to reinforce that. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's no bueno. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, you know, Therapy. I would say, I mean, I think looks, money, stats definitely matter, but so does game. They're, of both, course. they're both important. They're two equally, they're two important sides of the same coin. I think that when you have like, you know, the black pill guys who just glorify one side of the coin, it's like looks, money, stats, the only thing that matters. Game doesn't exist. It's, it's like, it's the same thing as saying that looks, money, status don't exist. It's only game. Right, right, like right, both, right. They're both absurd statements. Right. Of course, yeah. Of course, it's important. And sometimes, you know, even like how you dress. If you Sometimes if you're not like dressed a certain way, let's take an extreme example. If you're dressed like some, I don't know, some poorly fitted clothes and you have some like. Yeah, it's like some YouTuber who has like pants he bought on Amazon and sh- shoes that were given to him by his ex-girlfriend three years ago. It's some sketchy clothes yeah. and your grooming's not on point. You know, you have, you have a unibrow. Whatever it is, like. You know, sometimes like girls will just like immediately just be like, no, like I'm not even like giving this a chance, you know, Uh, right? like it's like the equivalent of, I don't know, trying to approach a girl in like some some dark alley in an uncalibrated light, uh, uncalibrated way with bad lighting. It's like it's like, yeah, that matters too. don't approach her in a dingy alley (laughs) in bad lighting. You know, bro, stop. Stop shitting on the PWF method. We run we run creepy alley game all the time here. What you uh, want to do is you want to find a chick in a creepy alley, then you sneak up on her. Gotcha. I'll, I'll say that sometimes to girls. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take when I'm taking them home, you know, or we're taking them somewhere. Like, where are we going? Like to a dark alley where no one can hear you. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, no, of course it matters. You know, like especially if you're trying to maintain relationships for with certain caliber of women who have a certain kind of lifestyle. You know, if you're some struggling, some struggling student um, working on your master's PhD, whatever it is, and you're trying to date a girl who's like making a hundred grand a year and she has a certain lifestyle, it's just, it's just not going to be practical. And she might, she might even like wonder, like, does he even have those masculine qualities that I look for? You know, now perceived status is more important than status itself. Yeah, yeah, of course. The vibe you give off, yeah. like if she's like. Okay, he could be that guy, mm. but right now he just wants to be a fucking student. She'll be like, right. "All right," and then you you kind of hash out the practicalities of it. But you maybe have some talks, like you say, "Look, I'm, I can't go to like fancy restaurants all the time because I gotta blah, blah blah." So like it can work, but like you know, oftentimes that become money becomes a problem because you just don't have access to venues or you can't take girls out on dates, and they're like, I would say even more than money grooming living yeah. or living situation i see that as a big issue like yeah. guys who live with their parents oh it's always it's always like guys live with their parents and the parents are super religious and they can't have any chicks over right like so you're just cog bucking yourself it's, it's you so know? hard in that situation yeah like get a small studio somewhere you know 20 minutes from the center and solve that or problem just get a roommate you can have roommates you can have roommates nothing wrong with having a roommate yeah there's there's, there's all kinds of solutions yeah oh <laughs> right, let's, let's go to the next question yeah. how old are you if you don't mind me asking 34. Cool. We got our good question. Uh, good question. Most, uh, <laughs> most uh, super chat Australian dollar, hundred dollars. Just one. Oh, wait, what happened? We were super chat. You're familiar with super chats? No. What is People it? can like send you money to like make sure their question goes to the front. Of the line. Oh, that was the question for hundred dollars? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, damn, I gotta know this. <laughs> Part two uh, How big is your dick? <laughs> no, he just sent it. He didn't send any question. Anyway. Okay. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you, Adam. Show the man some love. Carlos G, uh, did you ever have an easier time gaming harder girls than average girls? I'm at a point in my game where that's the case, and I'm not sure if it's an archetype thing. What are your thoughts? Sorry, one one more. So do, one you more ha- time. Do, do you ever have? Do you have an easier time gaming harder girls than average girls? Easier time gaining gaming harder girls than average girls. What's average? Like, let's say a six versus a nine or a ten. It's about the same, but in certain contexts, hotter girls are going to be are going to be harder. Yeah, if she's in, if she's in some that. kind of environment where, like, she's more distracted, 
Yeah. She, you know, nighttime, she's in a booth. There's a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. A higher value girl is going to just be more distracted. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to be like, you need to like be able to like grab her attention, right? So in that sense. But as far as like, once you do have her attention, um, similar, similar, it's more or less the same. Yeah. You know, it's, like, I mean, like, unless you have like those like bitchy, nonchalant, like models who are just like, just trying to be like cold and cool. Um, but I, I, I like to have fun with those. I'll be like, I love your nonchalant vibe. All you, all you need is a British accent. I just like goof around with her until she starts cracking up. Um, but yeah, like some of them can be harder and in certain contexts. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think he was asking the opposite, but yeah, I would say I've never had, I've never had to be so that a less attractive girl is harder than a really attractive girl. I can, I, the only thing I can do is I can game girls who I'm not attracted to physically. So I can like, game a four it'll be harder for me to game a four than game a seven because i'm not attracted to the four that's a very important point and i tell this to all my students and that's that's important on the boot camps is do not game uh you know approach meet women that you are not like interested in pursuing like at least like the threshold should be like would you like pull her tonight and put in a, like a couple of hours of work and like feel pretty good about that if not, like this is a waste of time. You're not gonna really learn much because you're not invested. So I won't I won't let students do that. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, should I just practice? I'm like, no, it's not it's not a good reference. And it's just not a good use of your time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you won't be you won't be as present. Like it's just bad. Yeah, if you know it's like playing poker without money. Exactly. Paper there's trading. There's, yeah. there's, there's there's no like yeah, there's no like stakes. It's not the same. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. How would your results change if you were five seven, or would they? How would my results change if I was five seven? I think it's yeah. like a hypothetical that's not possible to answer. Because yeah, it is a hypothetical. Does height matter? Of course it matters. Does hair matter? Of course it matters. Um, uh, you have to, if you're shorter, like look, vibe is the most important thing. Okay, your alpha qualities are the most important thing. How you make the girl feel, right? Your honest signals, your voice, all that stuff. So, like, yeah, if you're shorter, you got to really make sure your voice is, like, on point and your presence is strong or you just won't register as much. So, and having height helps with that, you know. But, again, just like with looks, it gets you a little bit more in, but then afterwards you still got to deliver on the vibe, bro. <laughs> he's not just going to be like, oh, he's tall and good looking. Um, that's good enough. How would you it's recommend not, for not. a guy who has like a super awkward vibe? How would you recommend for someone to fix their vibe? Again, I would start with, is there a lot of internal work that needs to be done first? Yes or no. If yes, do that. Um, slash fixing some like, you know, major life things like maybe go get a job or, you know, whatever it is, like basically strengthening the foundations and the inner work. But if that's more or less okay, fix their vibe. Well, I mean, what's wrong with their vibe, for example? Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be their voice, right? It could be that they're not expressive enough with their with their face, right? And I'll tell students to take some drama classes. Therapy could also help unlock certain things, you know, like some guys like because of some shit that happened in the past, they they don't <clears throat> they don't showcase emotions that well. Mm -hmm. I've had that, right? Uh, voice, facial expressions, they're afraid to touch, touch more. Right, that's an honest signals. Uh, touching people, guys, women in social settings is just is just more normal. All that contributes to vibe. Uh, how you pace yourself in conversation, uh, vocal modulation. There's like six honest signals. You know, I think what? I named eye contact. You know, sometimes it's stronger and more emphasized, more intense. Sometimes it's just very casual. Most of the time, it's casual. By the way, guys, not like. You're standing like this for 10 minutes on the day game opener. I don't know if the camera caught that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think you're caught. All right, let's do it again. <laughs> what's, what's the, uh, let, let's take like two more. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chill. From an, from an outsider's perspective, it seems like uh, JML was more about lay count, uh, but you seem to care more about intimacy and connection. Is that true? Who is JML? John Anthony. John Anthony. I would say that's true based on 
me knowing both of you guys. That he cares more about lay count than I care more about intimacy and connection with women. Yes, he cares more about lay count for his personal reasons, or as far as what he defines as successful with women. Like, what's what does he mean by that? I think. I, mean, I, 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 mean, I, I don't think it was a question. He's just making a statement. And uh, my, my, I guess I, it's a yes or no question. I, my, my my take would be yes, and it would be hard for Redeem to answer because he's not familiar with John. Yeah. But my my take would be probably yes. Okay, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Connection. Good sex. Uh, okay. Further elaborating on the black pill question, have have either of you have had very good cl- very good looking clients who, when you first met them, they were built with women? Yes. 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 Simple yes or no. No. See, rapid fire, like you asked. Well, yeah, was... Like good, like good looking tall. Yeah, yeah, I've had that. Okay. Let's, let's take one more. Let's end off on a good question. I can see we're starting to lose the team. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like stretching. I'm, just stretching. I'm, I'm engaged, bro. That's so okay, this one is like an engaged. archetype question. Be present, bro. How to differentiate between reserved versus conservative girl? For me, if the girl doesn't let me touch her in public, slightly I don't see our sexual chemistry going on. Should I drop? How do you differentiate between reserved Reserved and conservative girls. What's the difference? Well, so reser- reserved is like shy... Uh, and conservative uh, is like has beliefs around sex. Oh, so, how do you differentiate? Yeah, that's that's how. Yeah, my, my answer would be just escalate, and then you'll find out. If she's, I've had chicks who are super shy. Yeah, but, but then, then you, what you, he's also asking is, if the girl doesn't let me touch her in public, what does that mean? Well, she's probably on the conservative side then. <laughs> yeah, or he's miscalibrating, yeah, or, or he, too or, early, or she friend zone him. Exactly. So yeah. that's. But uh, uh, yeah, the reserved ones, by the way, all that shit. All that sexual stuff will come out as you set the tone in the interaction. Yeah. As you allow yourself to bring that out of, in them. They sometimes, you know, that they, they don't even know what what they're capable of, um, but um, how dirty they are. But um, yeah, as you start setting the tone, they'll be like, "Oh, it's okay for me to be the, this way as well." The conservative slash insecure and experienced ones just run just run <laughs> yeah like good, alex made a point like yeah just escalate test the waters with conversation you'll quickly like you know you'll quickly and it might not just be from a sexual perspective you might just gauge it in other ways where you're like this girl is just not experienced or conservative or she's there's there's some trauma that whatever it is and just yeah, i've had situations religious. where chick was like super shy whatever and then like when we start escalating when i start escalating all that just goes out the window and she's like super kinky and shit yeah so those are the more reserved ones yeah, where yeah. you just have to like tell them hey it's okay and then bring it out on them yeah yeah you just kind of gotta go for it you can't just like it, exactly. pussyfoot. yeah just turn on that porn when you're hanging out with her and she'll <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what, what i sometimes do actually i'll uh I'll casually let it drop that I made like a porno before with my ex, and then they chill like, "Oh, I'll be like, do you want to see it?" And sometimes like I show it to them. I'll be like, and like, that's, that works pretty Dude, well. I've done that because they're like watching you fuck, <laughs> and they're like, "Damn, like homie can fuck." And then like you know, there's like a girl moaning and shit, and that kind of gets them horny. That's yeah, yeah that, no, that's cool. That's a little cool. advanced, a little advanced <laughs> technique. There you go. Guys. Oh shit, that's the one where I'm jerking off. Hey, let's go to the other one. <laughs> All right, let's take one last question. Do either of you guys use qualifications? Qualifying the girl? I don't really much know. I don't think I do. Qualifying meaning is that when you tell them like what you like about them? Yeah, like it would be like, oh, it would be like, oh, you know, I really like that you blah, blah, blah. Like you're, you're, but it's not like a genuine compliment. It's like you're finding reasons to qualify her why she's a good fit for you. Okay. I mean, if, I, it, if I do, it's genuine, yeah, I do it subconsciously. I, I don't like try to qualify. Like, I give genuine compliments, but I yeah, yeah, genuinely. I don't, if you're I, like, I don't oh. do like qualification. Like, oh, let me find a reason to qualify her. Yeah, yeah, no, no, stay away from that. Like, don't, don't, don't force anything. Don't force anything. If it organically comes up and you're like, I, I like this about you, or like this about you, or like how we agree on this, um, then yeah, then I'll bring it up. Yeah. Word. Shit. <laughs> all right so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed these multiple camera angles we got three cameras so you can see a nice little i guess what we call it a 180 or 90 degree view yeah almost like a 360 view so anyway so uh thank you for coming to the studio we appreciate it dean thank, thank you for having me yeah anytime where uh where can people find your uh your stuff how can people yeah, yeah, check me out here? check me out on youtube uh honest signals uh instagram as well honest signals i am probably 
a lot more active on YouTube, longer form content and stuff. But occasionally I do stories and stuff like that and posts for sure. Um, and we're actually launching a course uh, tomorrow, assuming it's no technical issues, uh, if everything is planned, that I've been, uh, it's been highly anticipated and I've been working on in some sense for the last two years that kind of, Oh, nice. Yeah. Honest, honest chemistry, um, which is a follow up to my first course, foolproof approach where I focused on everything to do with approaching in the early stages of the interaction in every possible scenario you can dream of. So this is a continuation where it's everything to do about how to build chemistry with women from the pick, from the approach to the, um, to the date, to the bedroom, to the relationship, um sexual tension rapport comfort a bunch of bonuses it's a monster it's 20 hours long and it'll, it'll really like lay some fucking groundwork for you if you're learning about how to naturally organically you know become attractive and build chemistry with women and social chemistry with people in general like i delve into that as well because they go hand in hand so yeah it's going to be a seven week release and it's going to be on you know like a launch special so guys check it out um, if you want to take shit to the next level. Cool, yeah. Check out Vadim's channel. He's got some funny videos on there. Um, he's got one where he does, you do like the picking up a girl doing this, picking up a girl doing that. Oh, like my comedy series. Yeah, yeah those are fun. I always, yeah, I always get a kick out of those. Yeah, so those are fun. Check I'm a big fan of that. All the characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, have like most, you have like most interesting man in the world. Most or something? interesting man, French film director. French film director, uh, yeah. Argentine soccer god. Yeah, or some Russian spy. Anyway, a bunch of a bunch yeah, of those, those are fun. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We got a podcast tomorrow. We got three chicks coming in the studio. It's going to be a good time. Uh, we're going to be focusing on sex, so we're going to be asking them dirty, dirty questions because they're going to be dirty little slots. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> maybe, but no, we are going to ask a lot of sex questions. It's going to be all podcast all about sex, so it should be a good one. Uh, Indian P will be joining me for that, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. You go over to the Deems channel, show your support by subscribing to his shit as well. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time. Thank you.